Today, September 27, 2020, is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Mass Intentions for 8 o'clock a.m. Holy Mass. Petitions for the healing and speedy recovery of Father George Militante, Jacinta Patalinghug, Jovito and family, Madeline Miralpes, and Magno Diloy. For the good health of Alfredo Cabanero, Cristita Cabanero, Enzo, Dominic, and Julian Ezequiel Baritua, and Marian Cabanero. Huranyo and Abastilia's family. For the protection and safety of all frontliners all over the world, especially in the Philippines. Thanksgiving for all the graces received by the families of Nelson and Elsie Tabar, Arnold Piner, Nalwin Castro, Mary Rose Roella del Campo, Marlo Castro Roella, Nadal and the Stua families, Victor Bagatcholon and Susana Jadman, Leia Filosopo and family, Kubar family, Horanyo and Abastilia's family, Chito and Grace Galang, for the birthday of Mency Libodigo, for the birthdays of Henry and Mary Ann Miralpes, for the eternal repose of the following souls, Godofredo and Joscoro Kapangpangan, Juan and Euphronia Kapangpangan, Caridad Formoso, Jonathan Sotes, Gina Kapangpangan, Rufina Bartolaba, Telma Cabornay, May Lynn Sagario, Telma Figura, Roberto, Patrick, Candida, Henry, Ronaldo, Teresita, Crescente Ordeniza, Juan Ordeniza, Margarita, Nicolas, Tintay, Ernesto, Rosario, Jose, Leonila, Domingo, Mateo, Astora, Nelson, Filomena, Cabanero, Colin Cabanero, Mary Ann Cabanero, Valentin, Valentine, Francisca, Juan, Benencio, Herminia, Mamukatkat, Christian, Rodel, Seferino, Maria Frida, Bernard, Lucas, Olis, Rosario, Olis, Pasita, Rodolfo, Joaquin, Flor, Delino, Lourdes, Edelcito, Supatan, Luisa, Supatan, Alig, Alig, Yoho, Nicolas, Chofila, Nicolas Pabu Pabuaya, Generosa, Maria Eva, Lizel, Rodrigo, Roberto, Michael, Mark, Anthony, Feliza, Braulio, Eduardo, Cristita, Jaime, Melinda, Roger, Mirabel, Reynaldo, Cubillas, Jimmy, Hart, Harlan, Samson, Villarín, Crispula Bustamante, Vicenta, Concordio Sr., Consolacion, Ana Corita, Aida, Emma, Romeo, Edovigis, Carmen, Rafael, Emilio, Leoncia, Mirna, Dolores, Edgar, Doris, Lucrecio, Emiliana, Pablito, Senona, Benjamina, Jose, Bernadette, Angela, Letín, and Ramon, Sr. and Jr. For the birthday of the late Miguela, for the death anniversary of Fidelina Mancao and Edwin Cruz, for all souls in purgatory, the forgotten ones, and those who died of COVID-19. Let us now prepare ourselves for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist.
प्लीज ऑल स्टैंड In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, welcome to our Eucharistic celebration on this 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We welcome also those who are joining us online. We come together with hearts filled with gratitude for His many blessings. We also lift up to Him today our prayers and intentions for those whom we love and those who ask for our prayers. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us. With your Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God.
let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A proclamation from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, The Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, let our response be, Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Response, Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Response, remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Response, Remember your mercies, O Lord. A proclamation from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, Complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not only for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient, to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand to honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, Go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. There was once a little boy named Lito. He liked to play with his toys, but he also knew how to do some house chores, and he was fast in running errands. Every day his dad would call him to do some favor or send him to run some errand. And soon the rest of his elder siblings would do the same. They would ask their little brother to do them a favor or send him for an errand. And every morning, he would be told to clean up the poo of their pet dog under the staircase, a task he disliked most. But he seemed to have no other choice but simply to obey. One day, when he became, began to feel the burden of always being told what to do, and the favors and orders from everyone started to come almost simultaneously, one after the other, he thought of just packing up his clothes and then running away. The many orders and favors just made him feel he was being bullied at home, or maybe he was only a servant boy, or maybe an adopted child. Good enough, one of his elder sisters noticed him packing up and his face sad and downcast. When asked why he was packing up, he replied, Lalayas na ako kasi ampun lang naman yata ako dito sa bahay na ito. And immediately she said to her little brother, Oh no, no, no. And everyone else came, and they all embraced him, assuring him he was truly their blood brother. Dear brothers and sisters, we come together this morning to worship our Almighty God and Father, who created us, redeemed us in Christ, and made us 
his dear children through our baptism. We are here also to thank him for his abundant graces and blessings, especially this past week. And in our walk with Jesus through the footsteps of St. Luke, we pause to silent, we pause to silently meditate on his words and teachings. Last Sunday, we heard the parable of an owner of a vineyard who went out to hire workers for his vineyard at several times during the day. At the end of the day, all of them received a just and fair wage. What surprised us is that even the last batch of workers received a full day's wage even if they worked only for one hour. If that parable shows the amazing generosity of the vineyard owner, so we realize that God too is indeed an amazingly generous God. And He shows His super generosity to us, His servants, even if we do not really deserve it. Today, Jesus narrates another story, this time addressed to the chief priests and elders of the people. It is the story of a man who had two sons, both of whom he sent to work in the vineyard. But only one of them obeyed and actually went to his father's and did his father's will. The other son said, yes, but he never really went. I believe Jesus narrated this parable because of the joyful news that many tax collectors, prostitutes, and sinners who used to disobey God's law were beginning to repent and become his followers after the preaching of John the Baptist. On the other hand, however, he noticed that the religious authorities who have said yes to God's service never really fulfilled the will of the Father to recognize and believe in Jesus as the Messiah. How many of us are like those chief priests and elders? who utter many prayers and attend many Masses, but do not strive to fix our moral lives and obey God's will every day. Maybe we should spend some silent and prayerful moments to reflect on this. Moreover, in this parable we have heard today, I guess Jesus also wants us to understand and appreciate our Christian life as a filial relationship with God as our Father. The parable last Sunday showed how we as servants should serve the Lord and work in His vineyard. Such a relationship was based more on the payment or reward to be received after the work or service. The parable today, however, emphasizes more the Father son, father, daughter relationship that we should have with God. In the context, in this context, therefore, our obedience to God should not be based on the payment or reward, but rather on the filial love and reverential fear we should have for God. And in this context, therefore, Jesus teaches us Today, the value of obedience. If God, our loving Father, who is super generous, loves us so much, then we, on our part as children, should also be super obedient to His will and to obey His commands out of love and reverence. Don Bosco used to say, Obedience is the first virtue of the young. I repeat, obedience is the first virtue of the young. Why? Here are some good reasons. First, obedience to parents is part of the third commandment of God. Honor your father and your mother. Second, it is difficult and challenging to obey one's parents. 
it is easy, then it would not be a virtue anymore. And the older we grow, the more difficult it becomes to obey, isn't it? Third, young people who honor and obey their parents are actually honoring and obeying God, whom their parents represent. And fourth, if the young can obey their parents, whom they see, no matter how difficult the order may be to obey them, then it would not be too difficult anymore later on to obey God when they would be grown up. My brothers and sisters, especially dearly beloved children and young people who are present here or joining us online, Jesus tells you, obey your parents, honor and respect them, and God will keep you safe and bless you all your life. Later on, when you become adults, it would be much easier for you to obey your bosses and the superiors, and it will be a lot easier to obey the will of God. As we worship God, God in turn blesses us and calls us to follow the example of Jesus' obedience. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us that we Christians should have the same attitude of Christ. That is, though he was in the form of God, he did not regard himself as equal to God. Never did Jesus brag about his true identity as only son of the Father. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born like us. And he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Tomorrow, September 28th, is the feast of San Lorenzo Ruiz, who showed himself to be a true Christian when he chose to obey God rather than men. When he was captured in Japan by those who were persecuting the Christians, he had actually the option to renounce his Christian faith. He even asked those guarding him in prison if it was true that they would release him to freedom if he would renounce his faith. How he longed to come back to the Philippines to be reunited with his wife and children again. However, after much prayer and reflection, he made up his mind and chose obedience and fidelity to Christ rather than life itself. So when he was asked by the governor, if we grant you life, will you renounce your faith? Lorenzo Ruiz replied bravely, that I will never do because I am a Christian and I shall die for God. And for him, I will give many thousands of lives if I had them. That is the famous quotation from San Lorenzo Ruiz. I will give many thousand lives if I had them, all for God. And so he asked his guards to do with him as they please. They tortured him all the more before he succumbed to death, hanging him upside down with his head inside the hole on the ground, filled with human waste. Lorenzo Ruiz, our first saint, died as a martyr, faithful to God, faithful to Christ, obedient to the Father's will. We too, Filipino Christians, can do the same. 
we have what it takes to be saints. May this Eucharist, therefore, renew in us that filial relationship with God and empower us to follow Christ in doing the Father's will every day. God is good. Sobra, sobra, sobra. sobra. Please all stand. In response to God's word, let us now profess our faith for which we want to live and die. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born to the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God still challenges all of us to respond positively to his invitation to work in the vineyard of his kingdom, aware of our inclination to reduce our response to just nice words, let us implore the help of his grace and the Holy Spirit. As we all say, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the whole church, the community of all believers scattered throughout the world, may she lead the rest of humankind in always responding positively to God's will by doing what is just and right. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For the Holy Father and all our spiritual leaders, may they continue to edify us with their good example in carrying out God's plan for the growth of the kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For our government officials and other people in authority, may they be the first to obey the laws of the land and thereby lead us by example in promoting the common good. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, graciously, graciously hear us. us. For all seafarers who make so many sacrifices for their families, may they also be worthy representatives of our Christian faith wherever they are. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. For all those working for the people of the sea worldwide, May they always be ready to serve and care for the seafarers. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us, especially our youth, may we do our ordinary duties extraordinarily well. And in response to Our Lady of Fatima, pray the rosary every day for the conversion of sinners and peace in our world. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us now pray in silence for our personal intentions.
Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Father, guide our frail steps in life that we may always please you in our actions as you were pleased with Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it, the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering cancelled out our sins by his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life and by ascending to you o father he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Stand. Through our baptism, we all have become God's beloved children. And so now let us pray to our Father in heaven as Jesus taught us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are now invited to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. Amen. Please be seated for a while. To maintain physical distancing, we will receive Holy Communion by pews or by rows. Wait for the ushers to instruct you when it is your turn. They will guide you where to stand and how to return to your seats. The yellow and gray markings on the floor will serve as your guide. Thank you for your continued cooperation act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be ever separated from you. Amen. My soul is thirsting for the joy that comes from you alone. 
My being like the earth is parched and lifeless Without you by my side I lose my way In you, O Lord, is my strength and my salvation Kindness is greater good than life. My lips shall glorify your name forever, Lord. And I will tell my friends of your great love. The goodness you have shown me from of old. In you, O Lord, is my strength and my soul. Only in you my soul shall find its rest You are my soul, my glory, the rock of my strength Your constant love is my refuge I trust in you, O God, in my confidence Deeply troubled, filled with insecurities But you are there to lead me all the way You take me by the hand, I'm not alone In you, O Lord, is my strength and my salvation is my refuge please all stand let us pray may this heavenly mystery O Lord restore us in mind and body that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to suffering we are united. Whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please all kneel. Oratio Imperata against COVID-19. God our Father, we, we come, come to you in, in our need, need to ask your, your protection, protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease, to stem its transmission, protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of the virus and to save us from our fears. Amen. Prayer to Our Lady, Health of the Sick. 
We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsud. Pray for us. Saint John Bosco. Pray for us. Please be seated for a while. For some announcement, lives we are offering services of live streaming for funeral masses and weddings. We now accept baptisms. Confessions is by appointment. Please visit the parish office at the back of the church during office hours for details. Office hours is from 9 a.m. to 12 noon and 2 to 5 during weekdays and on Sundays, 9.30 to 12 noon and 2 to 5 p.m. To maintain physical distancing on our way out, we have two exits. Those seated at the left will use the left exit. Those seated at the right will use the right exit. We will go out of the church by pews or by rows. After the final blessing, please be seated and wait for the usherettes to instruct you when it is your turn. The red markings on the floor will serve as your guide to the exit. Thank you for your continued cooperation. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for your beautiful and prayerful participation. We thank also those who have joined us online. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Sing to the sea, raise your voices, lift your hearts. This is the day the Lord has made, let all the earth rejoice. I will give thanks to you, my Lord, you have answered my plea. You have saved my soul from death, you are my strength and my song. Be glad and rejoice. He has turned all death to life. Sing of the glory.